Thank you for being a part of today's study in the Gospel of Matthew today. Jesus declared that God's kingdom was at hand when he began his ministry. He said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. We have frequently defined the kingdom of God with Dallas Willard's definition as the effective reach of God's power. I don't think it's too bold to ask Jesus, if the effective reach of God's power is at hand, why don't we see more of it? Why do evil people and oppressive systems have such influence over our world and God's power seems to be so lacking? The parable of the weeds may be able to help us gain some clarity to this difficult question. The parable is found in Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 30 and Jesus provides an explanation of the parable in Matthew chapter 13 verses 36 through 43. Here's the parable of the weeds, and I'm going to add a few explanations to help us understand the setting in which it was written. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared also. The particular weed in this parable is called a darnel. It looked like wheat until both were mature. The grain from the darnel weed is poisonous. If both the wheat and the darnel are milled together, the mixture would be very unhealthy. Roman law had provisions to punish people who sowed darnel weeds among the crops of another person. Apparently, this was a method of revenge in that day. We continue. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Matthew 13 verses 23 through 30. The only way to separate the Darnell weeds from the wheat was at the time of harvest. Farmers would have, a, have to individually separate the Darnell from the wheat, which was a very labor-intensive and painstaking job. The Darnell would be bundled and burned while the wheat would be stored in a barn. Well, sometimes later, Jesus explained the parable to his followers. And we're going to do the same thing as we did a moment ago. We're going to read his words and then have a few comments after them. So Jesus said, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Jesus used the title Son of Man to describe himself. The book of Daniel is particularly important to understanding the concept of the Son of Man. Notice how the image of God's kingdom and the Son of Man are related in these verses. This is Daniel. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a Son of Man. He came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Living in the same field are both the sons of the kingdom and the sons of the evil one. The effective reach of God's power is present in the lives of the people who follow God's kingdom, People who are influenced by the evil one oppose the people of the kingdom. The devil has sown into our world evil people and evil happenings. Let's continue the parable, the explanation. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. 
Again, that's Matthew 13, verses 36 through 43. There will come a time when the two who have lived side by side will be separated. The causes of all sin will be removed. Heaven can only be heaven if people are free from the influences of sin. Lawbreakers will suffer judgment. Righteous, the righteous, people who are living a Jesus kind of life will shine like the sun in the full expression of the effective reach of God's power. Now the question is, why is the world like it is? Why does evil, oppression, injustice, pain, and suffering dwell in a world where God's kingdom has come? I have three thoughts. Let's consider them. First, faith and patience are needed. God is at work in the world, even though we may not notice it. The two parables that we will consider tomorrow will make that point. Patience is also called for. Religious conflicts throughout history are tragic examples of trying to root out evil with our methods rather than God's. Our assigned task is to work towards healing and deliverance and the proclamation of the good news. We are called to patiently labor in the midst of a corrupt and broken world while we wait for the harvest time. Number two, we can't sit above it all and assume that we are not part of the problem too. Uh, I know the problem uh, between the weeds and the wheat in my own life. Paul describes me, and possibly you too when he writes, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil that I do not want, I keep on doing. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. Paul doesn't leave us hopeless, but he provides us a solution for the eternal, internal conflict we face. He says, So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Do not let, therefore, sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Romans chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. All of Romans 6 would be really good reading if you have time for that. Finally, we trust that there is a God who is going to make a new world, and we're going to be a part of it. As followers of Jesus, we will shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. Verse 43. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping us live in a very difficult world. Please help us to be patient and to not give up working with you. We desire to be used by you to bring healing, deliverance, and the message of the good news of your love to the world. May we not be discouraged by the weeds that are a part of this existence. We thank you. Pray in your name. Amen. And thank you for being a part of this today. I pray that God richly blesses you. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.